That will probably be a much bigger change than we're talking about with, with sensors because it has major implications for the structure of, of U.S. agriculture, how farming is done, who does it, where it's done. Uh, and to explain that, uh, I'll have to say that the technology for robotic agriculture is there. Robotics are already widely used in industrial settings, in mining, in some other parts of the economy. Uh, but in agriculture, we don't see a lot of commercial use of that technology yet. And I think it will require a rethinking of how we farm and how we mechanize agriculture in order to make use of that. One of the main reasons of that is that a farm field is not like a factory or a mine where it's a completely or almost completely closed in private space. So out in a farm field you might find uh, a child or you might find uh, a pet or something else. And so this creates a very different liability setting uh, than use of robotics in some other sectors of the economy. Now, how do we deal with that sort of problem? Well, if we think about it, we could think about a case where we had, instead of uh, making autonomous versions of the current farm equipment, so large uh, 150, 200 horsepower tractors, we have smaller units that accomplish the same uh, uh, operation, uh, but which pose a much less of a, of a liability problem. Uh, and to imagine this, for those of you who are uh, Star Wars fans, you imagine a whole set of R2-D2s out there uh, tilling or harvesting or applying pesticides or whatever it is, and they're much less threatening to the general public uh, than a, uh, a uh, autonomous 200 horsepower tractor would be. Uh, but we, if we do that, then we change where farming is done and how it's done because all of a sudden the advantage of having large square or large rectangular fields uh, has almost disappeared. Some places where the soils are good, rainfall is good, but fields are small and irregular now have uh, a competitive uh, not necessarily advantage, but they're not as disadvantaged as they were. They may be closer to markets, they may have other advantages, and so this will change how we uh, structure agriculture in the United States. This is go uh, you're going to be producing many more units of smaller equipment, and so this means that this, this changes the sales uh, uh, equation. So instead of selling that grower uh, maybe one combine every two or three years, maybe you're selling that grower a dozen of these small units every year. Uh, and so that changes the technological advance perspective because you don't have to replace just that one big unit. You're, you can replace a few of them at a time. You could try out an experimental unit. You try out one or two of them just to see how they work. And it changes where those sales occur. So uh, we may get sales, uh, equipment sales out again in eastern Ohio or in Pennsylvania where farm equipment hasn't been a big business for the last few years. Uh, and so we're, we, we need to think about very carefully how that would uh, affect uh, the whole uh, business of farm equipment.